This is part 18 of our 100% walkthrough for Oracle of Ages. In this part, we're going to be getting a bomb capacity upgrade that lets us carry 30 bombs, I believe. Yes, that's correct. Um, we're going to get the Tuni Nut restored uh, when we visit the top of the restoration wall. And we're going to finish this part actually by making our way to the fourth dungeon in the game, the Skull Dungeon. You'll see at the kind of towards the end of this video, there's a ceremony that will take place to restore that Tuni Nut. And it's one of the most BS ceremonies I think I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. We'll kind of talk about that more as we get here. But kind of how we ended yes, we the will. last part and like beginning this part, like we kind of talked about the maze, like with the going between oh. the past and the present. And you'll kind of see a lot of that right here and just... I mean, that can be, like we said we didn't like it, and just, this is where it kind of got confusing for me. It, it really does, and learning that song that let us easily go from the past to the present, it was neat, but it definitely opened up the game's ability to really throw so many of these, like, pu not puzzles, yeah. but like you said, uh, maze, these obstacles in our path, and it just gets more and more tedious as the game goes along. <laughs> it does. I kind of, I kind of do like a part where we have up here, where we, like, we move a block in the past. Yeah, I do like it. And it changes like the flow of the water. And that's a neat idea, kind of similar to what we talked about with Symmetry City. But again, this maze is, it, it's starting to get complicated. <laughs> it's almost like there's too many resources, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I like the yeah. game when it's simplified. Like, I know Zelda games like really aren't that simple. But like, like it's kind of gets to the part where we have too many resources. We have too many capabilities and just... I remember that's it one is. of these things that confused me about the game so much. Was the whole back and forth between the time and the present or the past yeah. and the present. Yeah, we get time travel and a lot of Zelda games, but this one it just felt like we did it quite a bit more than other Zelda games. Well, it's like they took the whole concept of like traveling back and forth between the light world and dark world that we kind of hinted at in the previous yeah, part uh -huh. from A Link to the Past, and they blew it out of proportion to this whole new extreme yeah. where the entire game is based around that. And, it, and I remember a, a while back, I think we were talking about uh, A Link to the Past again, talking about the Swamp Palace was like a fun water dungeon, and then you hit the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time where they take yeah, the concept yeah. and just blow it up into something it doesn't need yeah, to exactly. be. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the Oracle of Ages is more based on puzzles. That's kind of how it's different from uh, Seasons. Like we said, I think it's more combat. Yeah. So I kind of do understand, like, why they went that direction. Because, hey, we want to make a puzzle game. So we want to make it more difficult, kind of going back and forth between time, find the right places on the ledges. But just to me, it was just too frustrating. But at the same time, I, I know agree. there's a lot of people that rank this game very high. And I think it is because of, like, just, you know, the... Uh, Mind, not altering, mind uh, boggling puzzles. Mind <laughs> boggling puzzles. puzzles. I get there eventually. Yeah. I will say I'm glad we got the bomb upgrade because if you remember back to when we were in the uh, the Moonlit Grotto, uh -huh. there were a few times we were only carrying 10 bombs and we were trying to use them to kill uh, Armos's Armos, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's Armos. You uh -huh. It was Armos. You're correct. <laughs> and we were worried we were going to run out of bombs. So now that we can carry 30 instead of 10, that was, uh, you know, it's a little late for that last dungeon, but it's a nice upgrade to have. Well, it's like just a crazy upgrade because you would think they would go to 20 and like you'd be like, okay, it's a nice upgrade, but not huge. Like going from 10 bombs to 30 is like, it's a game changer. Like you really don't have to it worry really about bombs the rest of the game because one, you'll kind of get them more in dungeons as we go along. Yeah. But yeah, once you get that 30 bomb upgrade, like I didn't have to worry about the rest of the game. So it is kind of yeah. nice, especially like you said, that last dungeon when that Armos room, I was getting kind of low on 10 bombs. So it's kind of <laughs> nice. Like we actually had that in the original Zelda too, where we had to kind of worry about bombs when we faced oh the Dongo gosh. in the second dungeon. Like that's very stressful to like, you know, like not having bombs on you. So it's just nice to kind it of really put is. that out of your mind and spend all your time on these stupid puzzles that we have going on. So <laughs> one thing I actually really liked when we were talking to the fairy who gave us the upgrade, she asked us if we threw in like a silver bomb or a gold bomb. And I don't know about you, the bomb upgrade is nice, but I would love to know what in the world a gold bomb or a silver bomb is going to do. Is it like going to blow up everything on the screen, like the Bombos medallion, medallion or yeah. something like that? Well, I, didn't, I want the gold bomb. I didn't try like what those two were, but I guarantee you, like she says, oh, like, you know, your line is she'll like either take yeah. health away from you. Or maybe Probably. take rupees away from you. I'm assuming it's something like that. Now, yeah. if you did get one bomb in exchange for the 30 bombs, eh, I mean, depending on how strong <laughs> that bomb was, and like, it, I don't know, maybe blow up a whole dungeon, I mean, that might be worth it, actually. So I, I'd take it. I'd take it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Now, climbing the restoration wall, you brought up, and I'd kind of forgotten about this, it reminds me a, a lot of climbing like Mount Cornell back in uh, Minish Cap where you've got the boulders coming down and everything while you're climbing the mountain. I really like that nice throwback 
to uh to, or throw forward i guess because minish cap came after this uh, let's not let's not get to the whole timeline and where they yeah. are on the t- are you talking about the timeline or the uh release date like of when the, the game were rele- when it was actually released i think minish cap was okay released yeah that's this, but... whatever like wherever the game was at it definitely yeah. was after this one because it's on the game boy advance that's right versus that's the right. game boy color but yeah cool little flashback to also uh, mount cornell like you said but also linked to the past too when we're kind of going up in oh, Death yeah. Mountain, we had those boulders coming down. So just, I don't know, kind of cool flashback. You know, actually, in the yeah. original Zelda, we had two of the boulders. So we did, we did. And now we're at that ceremony that you kind of mentioned in our inch or when we first started yeah, this uh-huh. part. It's like the whole idea is he's got this ceremony to restore the, the tuning nut. And basically, he sets it on a stupid mine cart. Yeah. And we ha- a minecart track. No, no, he, put, he puts on the he puts on the green spot, and then the minecart yeah. goes around, and the minecart can hit the nut and destroy it. Which, like I said, what kind of ceremony is that? That's more of like a trap, which he'll kind of hint at as we talk to him more and more. Yeah, it reminds me of when we were talking to the guys on Crescent Island that kept saying, "Oh yeah, I totally intended to give you your <laughs> yeah. items back." You know? Yeah, exactly. Like, Thank you for participating in my trap. Wait, I mean, ceremony. <laughs> yeah. So, you know the guy's just trying to get some entertainment. Even he said himself that he hasn't had any visitors in ages. So, I feel well, like he's just trying to spice up his life Well, a did you bit, see the you top know? of the wall that he lives at? I mean, there's boulders coming down nonstop. So oh, yeah. I don't know why he would expect any visitors anyways, but this is actually a pretty tough game, I think. I'll do it on the first be. try right here because, well, that's how I stop my recordings. I stop them right before hard <laughs> games. But we actually will visit this later on, too, in the game, and it's a lot yep. tougher the second time around but basically like all you gotta do is hit the enemies in the holes and if you can't yeah. get to them before the minecart comes around just step on that switch and it'll change it'll change the track so i mean it's not yeah. a very hard concept but it kind of is hard to pull off because those hard hat beetles or whatever will kind of push you a little bit off that switch they will and if you're off the switch when that minecart comes around and hits the, the tuning nut it, it you basically have to replay the game and like I said, it's not the most difficult this time no. around. But this is not uh, a situation. Maybe- this is not a situation where you want to bust the nut. You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not that kind <laughs> of situation life, right we'll there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know, it, I, I had to throw that one fun in. Little- Go ahead. Hey, I I, I laughed. That's a- <laughs> but this game has a lot of these little mini games that we have to do that aren't optional. Like some games. A lot of Zelda games, all these mini challenges and stuff are very optional. Yeah. But in this game, it seems like they're so mandatory in so many instances. And they're not, like I said, they're not easy games. Like, when you go to a Rolling Ridge later on, there's Ugh. a bunch of, like, Goron <laughs> games that will play. And that's really, I guess I shouldn't really spoil it too much, but that's really what turned me off to this game. But, like, kind of yeah. go along with what you said, there's a lot of difficult mini games in this game. So just yeah. one thing that I actually kind of found surprising for a Zelda game. Now, we talked a little bit about like the things we did in the past that affect the present. I love how much better Symmetry City when we yes. come back to the present. But now that we're here, this is going to go ahead and wrap up part 18 of our 100% walkthrough for Oracle of Ages. <laughs> 